Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about how to optimally train everyone's favorite muscle group, the biceps. And while the biceps do get trained during any kind of vertical pulling exercise, like pull-ups or pull-downs, as well as to a lesser extent during any kind of horizontal pulling movements, like rowing exercises, most people will definitely still need to train their biceps directly if they want to grow them in the most optimal way. And so in this video, I'm going to be laying out a four-step strategy to make the best possible bicep gains, starting with the most basic step and getting more advanced as we go. So step number one is to choose the right exercises. So to do that, we first need to understand the main functions of the biceps. So the two main ones are elbow flexion, so in other words, bending at the elbow, as well as forearm supination, so turning your palms up to face towards you. In addition to that, your bicep also works as a weak shoulder flexor, which means that it helps your shoulder in raising your arm up in a forward motion. So with that in mind, I find that the free motion cable curl, as well as the incline dumbbell curl, are two of the best bicep exercises that you can do as both of them push your upper arm into shoulder extension at the bottom of the movement, which will in turn place quite a big stretch onto your biceps. And research tends to find that stretching under load and training out longer muscle lengths results in more muscle growth. So I think that it's a good idea to incorporate some kind of curling movement into your training program where your upper arm is held behind your body. Next, I also like to include either a barbell curl or an easy bar curl into my training program. Now, these don't give you the same amount of stretch that an incline dumbbell curl would, but they do, however, allow you to use the most amount of weight and they also make it really easy for you to apply progressive overload because you're able to just make small load increases from week to week. And this is an advantage over something like a stand-up dumbbell curl or even some kind of machine curl where you have to wait a lot longer for you to be able to add weight as the increases in load here are a lot bigger and if you increase the load too early then you increase the risk of you compromising your form. Personally, I prefer the easy bar curl over the barbell curl just because it allows me to hold my hands in a more natural way while I'm curling and it feels more comfortable on my wrists. But that's just my personal preference and for a lot of people, the standard barbell curl works just fine. Now there are a ton of other bicep exercises that you could potentially do, but to make the choice a little bit easier, I think a good checklist to go through is, does the exercise allow for progressive overload? Do you get a good mind-muscle connection? So do you actually feel your bicep working during the movement? Is the bicep actually the limiting factor for you if you go to failure or is it maybe something else like for instance your forearms? Do you ideally get a good stretch under load and do you get a good pump into your biceps after only doing a couple of sets of the movement? And if the exercise that you're doing checks all of the boxes or at least most of them then you know that you've got a good bicep exercise. So step two is to make sure that you're executing the exercises correctly. So for any kind of bicep curl you want to maintain the same torso and leg position at all times while also keeping the elbow pretty much stationary. Now, a little bit of forward movement at the elbow is fine, but you just want to make sure that it's not excessive. And then to lift the weight up, you want to think more about squeezing your biceps and less about the actual weight that you're using, because focusing too much on the load that's on the bar will oftentimes result in people performing so-called cheat curls, where they're using the momentum and swinging the weight up, which will in turn place less tension onto the biceps. And then another thing that I like to do is to take a pretty loose grip when performing curls, because that will decrease the involvement of the forearms and will actually increase the activation of the biceps. And then while I'm lifting the weight, I'm thinking about turning my pinkies up towards the sky because that will make sure that I'm getting that full supination of the forearm. You also want to perform the eccentric, so the lowering part of the lift and the control, and make sure that you're getting full stretch at the bottom. And if that's something that you struggle with, then one thing that you can do is to actually flex your triceps at the bottom of the movement because that will ensure that you're actually straightening your arm out all the way. And if you've been enjoying this video so far, then be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. The third step is to make sure you're getting the right training dose. So this includes the rep range that you should be training in, the amount of training volume you want to be doing per week, and the proximity of failure that you should be training at. Now, in my video on how heavy you should be training for muscle growth, I explained that you can build muscle in a variety of rep ranges, and as long as you're getting pretty close to failure, sets of five all the way up to 30 repetitions pretty much are equally as effective for muscle growth. Now, with that being said, I find that going really heavy on curls can often lead to a lot of elbow discomfort and pain. And so for me personally, I find I get the best bicep stimulus from doing sets in a more moderate rep range of about eight to 50 repetitions. If you still experience elbow pain, then you might want to consider training in a higher rep range, so more like 20 to 30 repetitions and also try taking a more neutral grip when you're curling. So you might miss out a little bit on your bicep stimulus if you're only training with a neutral grip, just because you're not getting that full supination of the forearm. But if that allows you to stay healthy and train your bicep consistently, then it's definitely a trade-off worth doing. 
and you're obviously still going to get a lot of bicep stimulus just because you're going to still be bending your elbow. Now, because bicep training isn't that globally fatiguing, meaning you're not really fatiguing your nervous system that much from just doing curls, and research also finds that the closer you go to muscular failure, the more muscle mass you're probably going to be growing, I'd advise you to leave no more than one to maybe two repetitions in reserve on your sets and take at least the last set of every single exercise all the way to muscular failure. And in terms of volume, the general recommendation for maximum muscle growth is to do at least 10 sets per muscle group per week. But because you're getting so much bicep work from most of your back exercises, I think a good place to start is to do two to four sets of direct bicep work twice per week and focus on improving the quality of your sets first. If you can't get a good bicep stimulus from doing at least four sets in a training session, then you're either A, not performing the exercise correctly, or B, the exercise just in general isn't that good. And you should probably address those two things first before you think about increasing your training volume. Now, the last step is to do a bicep specialization phase. So if you're already doing all of the previous steps correctly and your biceps still aren't really growing, then you might want to try what is called a bicep specialization phase. And basically what this means is that you want to increase the frequency of how often you're training your biceps. So let's say at the moment you're training them twice per week, you would increase that to three to four times a week, which will in turn increase your overall weekly training volume. So even if you're doing something like an upper lower split, you would not just train your biceps on your upper body days, but also on your lower body days. You just want to make sure that you increase the volume and frequency gradually, because otherwise you do increase the risk of experiencing joint pain. Another thing that you should consider if your biceps are a weak point compared to the rest of your upper body is to actually start your workouts with doing curls and train your biceps when they're still fresh instead of at the end of a workout when you're tired and your biceps have already been trained indirectly. Because there are studies out there that show that you make slightly better gains in performance if you perform a movement first at the beginning of a workout. Now this will have a slight negative impact on the rest of your upper body movements, especially your back exercises. But if you're already happy with your back development and you're really trying to bring up your biceps, then that's definitely worth it. And it's not like you'll be training like that forever. In general, I find that specialization phases should last at least four weeks. But if you want to make the best bicep gains possible, then realistically, you're probably looking at more like 10 to 12 weeks. After that, you can go back to more normal training, reduce the volume of your bicep training, just to give your joints a little bit of a break. And then if you want to, you could jump right back into another bicep specialization phase. So if you follow these four steps, then you're definitely going to set yourself up to make the best progress possible in terms of bicep growth. And then obviously you want to be tracking how effective your training is so that you can make any necessary changes if you have to. And if you want to learn more about how to track your progress correctly, then you might want to check out this video right here where I explain exactly how to do so. So thank you so much for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next video.